All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown. All three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Stormbird by Con Igledon, book number one in his War of the Roses four-book trilogy, which I have here. Um, book two, I don't know if this is book two or not. Book two, um, Margaret of Anjou. Uh, book three, Bloodline. And book four, Ravenspur. And they all look pretty cool on the shelf together. They all look like they belong. As you saw, all the covers look like they uh, go to the same series. It's pretty cool. And uh, we got here Stormbird. Let's talk about it. Book number one. Um, the cover. Uh, let's talk about the covers first. Well, we just kind of did. It's dope. I mean, it looks, I mean, there's no real great illustration on it, but it looks kind of cool. It's like nice and elegant. I like the way it looks. It just just a really good cover. Um, now in here, there are many maps, you know, even on the front page, there's just color maps. Uh, inside, there's even more maps. There's a lot of maps, folks. There's a lot of different maps. There's character lists, which is good. And like I said, there's maps everywhere. Um, there's character lists, lineage charts, all sorts of things. Lin more lineage charts, all things, sorts of things. More in and then more lineage charts, all sorts of things to keep you. And then a character, vast character list in the back. Um, and then even on the back, there's a another uh, lineage thing with the like the heraldic shields i mean it's just a well put together book just absolutely dynamite um so it is about the war of the roses uh and it's so that's a convoluted thing you know i mean everybody knows george r r martin's game of thrones was sort of based loosely off of the war of the roses which took place between um you know the Yorks and the uh, and the uh, people that were not the Yorks, uh, the uh, King Edward and his crew. Um, okay, so uh, there's a prologue. This starts out. Um, there's a prologue. Starts in 1377. So um, King Edward is uh, he's been ruled. He's ruled for 50 years. He's about to die. He sends for his sons. The sons he sends for are John of Gaunt, um, Edmund of York, uh, and Thomas, the Duke of Gloucester, and um, to the you know to just kind of tell them what's going to happen here um now the black prince um was the eldest brother but he's dead and of course that was the guy that the king loved the most of course uh, the other three brothers know that the king loved the the black prince the best but he's dead he's out of the picture um um so that's kind of the setup for um what's going to happen these three brothers john of gaunt edmund of york thomas the duke of gloucester that's sort of the setup, plus the Black Prince's, um, the eldest son, he's got a, another son that, uh, and that's a, the, that young boy anyway. It's going to become a big Game of Thrones type situation here where, uh, who's going to rule? So we skip ahead to 1443, you know, some 60 years later, when all of the descendants are kind of now are in place, and all the chess pieces are in place for the massive War of the Roses. Now, Con Igledon does admit that in places he plays fast and loose with history, compressing events, moving events around um, to fit the narrative and the timeline for a good story. That's fine. I think when you go into historical fiction, you just come to expect that. Um, he's in, he, he admits to inventing new characters like Derry and a few others uh, to help with the narrative. So anyway, Henry the... Um, Sixth, I believe, is what it was, is uh, uh, on the throne. In uh, he takes the throne in 1437. Now he's pious, he's gentle, he's poor of health, he's frail. Um, he depends mostly on his spy master Derry and um, William de la Pole, the Duke of Suffolk, to run uh, the affairs of the kingdom. Uh, meanwhile, um, the Plantagenets. Uh, we've got Richard the Duke of York, believes that things should be run from a position of strength, not weakness. Henry, he believes Henry is a weak wing, and, and by God, the king should be strong. 
And so here we've got the conflict. Um, England's territories and France um, fall under threat. What's going to happen? Who's going to be able to take care of this the best way? Um, secret deals. There's a secret deals to for Henry to marry uh, Margaret of Anjou. And um, a lot of convoluted political things a lot. Now this book had a lot of action in it. I was I was I was going into it thinking is that a little more of a more of a um history kind of like slog. I was thinking that uh but no uh and I think that's one of the reasons why Con Eagleden admits to compressing events to fit into the narrative. So he could have sort of an action packed historical thriller novel type of a thing going on here with um with these events because in reality a lot of this stuff was spread out over a lot of different time and space and and, and place but he's he's kind of boiled it down to these characters these people and compressed the events into um this story which makes it really spin by fast and i did really like the character of Derry. he was kind of like the main character um the spy master that was kind of working for henry and um but yeah, I mean, it, it turns into medieval um, Machiavellian plot into plot, plot against plot, against betrayal, against who's doing what, who's marrying who, who can we get to marry who, why are they marrying this person, let's let's go fight here, let's not fight, let's uh, stab this person in the back, let's try to poison this guy, let's go spy on this person. I mean, it's just, it's the War of the Roses. It's And you can see why. Um, you know, George R. R. Martin picked this period of history to sort of loosely base his stuff on. Anyway, I personally, I've read quite a few Con Eagleden books, and I, the, I, I really kind of liked the, the although this was good, um, I liked his uh, Rome series. Uh, I liked it. Uh, well, I've read all of those. Um, I'm saying that I'm probably close to Rome. I really enjoyed the Julius Caesar books he did. This comes close. This was surprisingly, um, like I said, I don't know why I went into it thinking that it was just going to be like a historical, dry historical slog. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I'm just delusional. But it was actually a really action-packed medieval story. The only other criticism I might have for it is I wish it was longer. I mean, yeah, there's four books in the series, but I wish they would have been literally like Ken Follett, Pillars of the Earth sized and uh, maybe a little more detailed. But then again, that would have gotten rid of the fast pace of the whole thing. I can't have, I can't have, I can't have it either way. I, I, I mean, I just want everything all the time. Okay, so I'm going to give this a solid 8 out of 10 for Stormbird War of the Roses by Con Eagleden, Volume 1.